Welcome back to Fantastic People. I'm Christian. And I'm Reagan. And here with us today is a very special guest. All, I mean all the way, like all, so far. As most guests are. From Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. Uh, store manager of Where America Drinks Coffee. Uh, is that the tagline? That should be. That you should send should that, be. Send that should to be. the marketing. Where uh, America Drinks Coffee. Yeah. Uh, which, of course, is Starbucks. Um, Katie Freeman. Katie, how you doing? I'm okay. Although that kind of sounded like Duncan. I think you were going for Duncan. Their America runs on coffee. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. you tried. No, <laughs> no. That's, but Starbucks yeah. is where America drinks coffee. Drinks. True. Uh, that's it runs on Duncan, but it, the, it Trademark, doesn't last Trademark for that. sure. Yeah. Starbucks wants to <laughs> that pay is, me for that tagline. That's pretty close, actually. I didn't I think of that. I don't even think we no. have a tagline, so we I could didn't. we could suggest it for yeah. sure. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm, I don't really care about Duncan. So. <laughs> you don't like Duncan coffee? I don't dislike it, but it's just not that it's not it doesn't stand out. I don't like coffee in general, but <gasps> my in-laws are from New England, so they're hardcore of Dunkinites. You have to. Not, I mean, yeah. okay, I'm gonna say it because we're here. Dunkin' coffee is like a step up from the off, like the office coffee, you know, that you get in the break room. Uh, Very yeah. true. No, I'm. Is it a step up though? It might just be equivalent. It's well, at least a step. You're up. biased. Yeah, I will stop at Dunkin' <laughs> before I get it. In I the am office. biased just a little bit. Although little bit. in my office we have those like glorified. In your Starbucks. home office now, or at well, your no, at my <laughs> office I office know. where yeah. I don't go anymore. Um, we have those like big machine. It's like a Keurig, but it's. Like five different espresso? versions of coffee and yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's yeah, starbucks yeah. so yeah. i mean i guess that's not true anymore because you can you can do that but i uh i speaking of working from home i crossed the year mark this week i have been i have worked from home for a solid 12 months now and it's i don't ever want to go no, back i think i've hit that as well was i first or did you go home first i have no i think you did beat me by like two days or something yeah. the government is slow to everything right so. right Mm-hmm. Agreed on that. Even one. if they knew about COVID well before everybody else, <laughs> we it was were the, an inside job. We were the like, yeah. Oh god. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, Katie, what's 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 working for Starbucks like? This mega corporation. Uh, um, it's a good time. It's it's busy, but it's good. Um, I've been. I actually just celebrated seven years with the company on wow. the twentieth. Congratulations. Seven years. Worked my way from the bottom to a manager. Now um, you're here. But it's good. It's we actually did record sales last week. Nine hundred dollars shy of fifty thousand dollars. Wow! To fuel fuel America, as you said. Um, but it's good. It's a lot of leadership involved. A lot of developing young minds, all while serving coffee. So that's why I like doing it. That is cool. Mm-hmm. That's um, you know, Starbucks is weird because it's. I don't drink coffee. I don't have the affinity for that. Mm-hmm. But it was a place I was always interested in working when I was like, you know, looking for a job, like. It seemed like a good company to work for. Oh, yeah. We're actually uh, top uh, Forbes, like 100, but we're in like the top 10. Uh, I know last year we were number five. It was like Disney was number four, and we were number five. So I was like, oh, wow. if you can't work for Disney, you can just work for Starbucks. It's kind of the same thing. So, wow. um, yeah, I really our company really strives for the values of humanity mm-hmm. versus it's just a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. It's definitely people first, then you just happen to hand them a cup of coffee. So um, that's definitely the reason I stay. They take care of their people 110%. Um, so, yeah, you would have to, like, pry me from leaving Starbucks. I absolutely mm. adore my job. That's, that's awesome. cool. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. I, I I like Starbucks coffee. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> is, do I like how much I have to pay for it? No. No, I, I kind of with um, you there, too. But, I mean, you know, there's value beyond the coffee. I think that's what they offer in mm-hmm. the atmosphere. Um, I said it. Amer- that's where America drinks coffee. I mean, mm-hmm. you go in, you feel at home. Uh, it's a great place to be. So I, I, I do appreciate that for sure. We definitely take care of everybody. Like we say, it's called the first 10 feet and the last 10 feet. The first 10 feet are the farmers. The last 10 feet are your baristas. And we take care of everybody in between 100% to make sure that everybody is taking care of whatever they need, whether that's agriculture. Um, like I know my favorite story that we've ever done is we developed um, coffee rust resistant trees. Uh, it was a fungus that was growing on trees and killing coffee, and it was supposed to be extinct by 2030. But Starbucks invested all this time, money, scientists, into making rust-resistant trees. So now coffee should not be extinct from the world because I don't know how anybody would survive without wow. coffee. So um, definitely a company that takes care of their people in all aspects, not just the ones you see every day. Mm-hmm. 
Well, we probably could talk about Starbucks because a lot of people, I know a lot of people who are big fans of Starbucks. Oh, yeah. Put an asterisk in that. might be a future episode of Fantastic Right. Um, That's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, You're wearing a shirt. I am. Related to it. Yeah. The the world can't see it. Right. (laughs) It's okay. What are we here to discuss today? We are here to discuss The Office. The Office. The NBC sitcom phenomenon. I believe it debuted on NBC. Yes, it was an NBC yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Developed by Greg Daniels mm-hmm. and Mike Shearer. I might be wrong about that. I think Mike Shearer was part of it. but I trust you. you you're going to be the expert in that area of knowledge. Agree. Yeah, I didn't go that, that deep. For um, sure. A remake of the British television show. Mm-hmm. What, what, how did you fall? When did you discover it? So I discovered the office when I was a nanny. Um, I was about 17 years old. I was working for a military family and her husband was deployed and, um, we just got like, she went on a girl's night, just got the kids to bed and I was due to go home and she was like, Hey, why don't you just hang out? I found this new show. Um, she, um, t it. So uh, TiVo. TiVo yeah, dating. Yeah, yeah. I had to, I was like, I know it wasn't DVR back then. I mean, it's um, fine. We don't have any people younger than 30 listening. Right. To well, okay. I don't want to offend those. We have a few. You I don't think. know that. We have like two, but we also have like five listeners. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so she invited me to, she ordered a pizza. I was like, let's watch it. Um, Cause I'm, I've fallen in love with it. She's like, I will warn you. It's a little, it's a little dumb humor, but I'm like, I'm in, I love dumb humor. So ordered a pizza sat down with her, watched it, and I just instantly fell in love. Um, first episode was, it was the one where Ryan started the fire. Um, so it was just a really good time, and I just kind of got, kind of warped into it then, but it didn't stick until um, we moved to San Diego ourselves, and my husband was on deployment. And, uh, yeah, that's when I rediscovered it while he was on deployment. So it kind of just came full circle for me. And then I didn't miss an episode. It was Swamp People first, Office next, <laughs> every Thursday, for sure. So I want to be a little unconventional from our normal okay, formatting Okay, let's here. hear it. Let's hear uh, it. Since we, all three of us really enjoy the show, uh, Christian, when did you first experience it? Oh, that's tough. Um, probably 2007, 2008-ish. Um I really don't remember specifically uh, how I came about watching it. I just remember by like season five, I watched every week. You know, I did not catch it in the beginning, um, but probably around season four, season five, I became a weekly viewer. And then when it came to Netflix, of course, that's when probably I'm not gonna say my obsession started, but that's when the constant, uh, you know, uh, preference to just choose the office over anything else um that was the era of i could watch something new or i could watch the office again Mm -hmm. and that's that's probably where i really like truly fell in love with it yeah how about you uh i i guess it would have been probably 2008 maybe when did the show come out 2006 Uh, i think the first 2005 i think it aired in like 2004 or five yeah okay so maybe it was five or six or seven i don't know doesn't matter um and it was at, I'd been aware of the show, uh-huh. uh, but it was at a, a friend's house. Um, I, I think it was like a, a birthday party or just a bunch of people hanging out. I don't know. And it came on TV and one person was like a huge fan. It was like, oh, you guys got to watch the show. And I was like, man, this is so stupid. Like, and I'm into stupid humor, which is kind of weird, but like, I just wasn't, I wasn't getting it. Right. Yeah. Was it a season one episode? I, I think it was, yeah. or it might've actually been season two. It was, I mean, it was when it was like running constantly, you know, reruns. Oh, yeah. so I'm not sure what season it was, but it was one through three for sure. Um, the drier seasons. Mm-hmm. Well, you had to, and we'll get into this, but you, you had to know the characters to understand the humor at that point. Uh-huh. And it was so far into the show that I didn't get the characters at all. So that was just really stupid. Um, but then, you know, a couple of years go by and everybody's still talking about it. And season six, I believe is coming up on a finale, um, or maybe five. And Hulu was really starting to become a thing at that point, streaming TV shows. And it was one of the first ones available. So I said, oh, I'll go check out this show, I guess. It seems to be pop culture. Uh, and then got through the first three or four episodes and then just couldn't get enough. I binged the whole thing all the way up to wherever the current episode was mm-hmm. so that I could watch um, as it went. Of course, it 
I kind of really got into it as the the peak was ending. Uh huh. Uh, you know, the Michael story was ending. Um, but I don't, I don't care. I still kept. I, I thought it was all great. Sort of. How many times do you think you've watched the show, top to bottom? It's got to be at least twenty, at least. That's so much television. Mm-hmm. Like watching it through, like deliberately. Yeah, twenty. That's a hundred and eighty seasons of television. That's a lot, but I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot. Um, it's definitely like uh, we have heavy. like a rotation of shows. We have like a top five that we rotate through. The Office is always my choice. My husband is a Parks and Recs guy, uh, so we alter between those two. Also, Greg Daniels. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then uh, Friends is number three, um, and then we have How I Met Your Mother, and then we throw MythBusters in every now and then to wow. kind of to okay. spice it up. That's kind of like the do a watch while you're doing the dishes kind of thing. Yeah, or? like just in the background when you're falling asleep, um, or just background noise. Mm-hmm. Um, he grew up on television. I grew up on music, so our mm-hmm. music tastes are very different. So, but our TV tastes are not. So we usually alternate <sighs> the TV shows. That's lucky. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> It gets on my nerves because I still prefer all my music all the time, but it's okay. Yeah, it's as fine. does my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, but her music taste is wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> it's <not> wrong. <laughs> it's just... Love you, honey. I feel like narrow. if we were to go off on that, so we would, it, would, it would turn into a... It would reveal some stuff, mm-hmm. probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, her and I, we watch very similar television. Um, we try to be good about not rewatching things, but we are currently rewatching How I Met Your Mother because I think that was like the first sitcom we watched together as a married couple. Mm-hmm. Really, it's uh, just such yeah. a good show. It's I've, so I've good. not seen it. Chelsea saw it all. She watched it on uh, maternity leave the first time. Mm. Um, Did she How not I Met like Your Mother the is ending? So good. If she oh no, like, no, she doesn't like the ending. Yeah, see, no. I I am in the camp that the ending is the correct ending to the show. Oh wow. Um, I hope she listens to this one, which is controversial to a lot of people. It's but. okay. It wasn't terrible. Yeah. That's not what we're It needed more. About. But I feel like that's almost all TV shows at this rate. Like, let the fans write the last season. Well, yep. certainly for TV, and I think this is maybe kind of true for The Office as well. It's such a, yeah, it's a game motivated by numbers, you know? Like, mm-hmm. viewership and money is really the driving force. So if, as long as people are still tuning in, the studio does not want to end it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So The Office probably should have ended in season five or six because yeah. it kind of goes off the rails for a while and mm-hmm. like, again Gr- greg daniels leaves to develop parks and rec he ends up coming back um i think for the last season but uh it's if you if we weren't so motivated on just keeping it going as long as possible we could probably stick the landing a little bit better yeah and mm-hmm. that, for that, sure. i think that's definitely true in how i met your mother because season Agreed. six through eight is nonsense but mm-hmm. I, i'm deep in it now um, do you guys have a favorite office character? Mine main character is Jim, hands down. It's always gonna be Jim. I absolutely adore the the camera looks, the antics, the pranks, the the smirks, all of it. Um, John Krasinski is just one of my favorite actors, period. So can't can't get away from Jim. But as far as like an underdeveloped character who's just there but everyone knows, definitely Oscar. Oscar and Jim are my two favorites. Oscar Nunez. Mm-hmm. I adore Oscar. Right. He also is very sharp with his comebacks. Yes. And He's very witty. Lack of tolerance, too. Mm-hmm. Like, he puts up with a lot, but at the same time, he puts his foot down. So mm-hmm. I adore, yeah. adore Oscar. Um, that's such a hard that's such a hard question to me. Um, you want to say Jim, too, don't you? No, I, honestly, I really don't. I mean, there's, it's a well-balanced show. In terms yeah. of the characters, mm-hmm. uh, they they balance the use of every most everybody. There are some characters they don't use too much for good reason, um, but I mean it's hard not to say Michael because to me the show really rests on on Michael and how everybody interacts mm-hmm. with Michael or responds to what Michael crazy things he does um, in a lot of ways. So. While the show survived after Michael Scott, uh, sort of, um, it, it he's I don't know it, he's if that, he wasn't there to keep that development, it wouldn't have. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, and he he's the guy that everybody loves to hate and hates to love. Mm-hmm. I mean, so it, <laughs> I don't know. I I find myself laughing most at his moments. Absolutely. Um, so I would say he's probably my favorite. Oscar, I would I would agree is a. Um, 
maybe under-recognized character mm-hmm. that you don't really learn to appreciate until much later into the show um, and, and offers comedic moments, uh, but also kind of grounds, grounds everybody. Oh, yeah. Um, he's definitely the grounding character of yeah. the whole um, area that he's in. It's not coming to me. Christian does accounting. Lo- the accounting, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, probably. I mean, you guys make good points. Um, Dwight would be the other one that I would include yeah. in the mm-hmm. the mandatory. The show doesn't work without it. You know, originally there were only, I think, five, um, like permanent roles, which were Jim, Pam, Michael. I've seen maybe four, and and Dwight. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone mm-hmm. else was like on an episode episode basis. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, the show doesn't work without Dwight. But my favorite two are probably Creed and Kevin. Uh, they, they're the funniest characters to me. Yeah. Kevin spilling the chili, hilarious. No, Creed hilarious. has all Top the best lines. Moments. Yeah. Um, the you know, oh, it's Halloween. That's fortunate. Is great. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Jim being like, "Is this real?" and Creed being like, "Are you real, man?" <laughs> great. That's true. That's true. My favorite is that with Creed moment is um when they're doing the self defense. And he, they go through the steps and he just stands up, does it. I, don't, I think, who's he smack? Meredith? And then he just runs out. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Creed is, Creed is definitely underappreciated as well. What about least favorite character? Um, Probably Ryan. I can't stand yeah. Ryan. Oh, right there with you. I, yeah. Every moment with Ryan outside of Michael, you know, sort of making him like his, uh, whatever he is. Um, those moments are funny, but that, it should never have gone past that mm-hmm. with, uh, with Ryan. You know why, though, right? Because Greg Daniels made it a requirement, basically, that the writers had to be characters on the show. Mm-hmm. So BJ Daniels had to be somebody. Yeah. Same thing with Mindy Kaling and Toby, whatever his name. I can't remember. Yeah, that which is yeah. also a brilliant it's a good thing. It's brilliant to the show. Is there the people doing it or the people writing it? And so Absolutely. it's their little group love child. But it did go on too long. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, I'm I'm definitely Toby, like, and I think it's because of Michael Scott hating him. Yeah, absolutely. But I just his character is so dry, it's so cringe worthy too. Like his crush on Pam, like those episodes oh, yeah. make my skin crawl. Um, and then Phyllis, like I know she also was like a writer in the show, and she just was so, she just mm, Bob Vance. It's like nails on a chalkboard when she talks. <laughs> And wines, I don't know. But she's like precious, but she's definitely that person when I think of an office character, oh, yeah. like setting, because I don't, I've never worked in an office setting. Uh-huh. Um, I know that she'd be the one that I would just would constantly roll my oh, yeah. eyes. They're, they're out there. Right. Those just be like, there. all right, oh, she's coming. Go the other way immediately. Like I couldn't, I would not be able to handle a character like Phyllis in real life. And act like you're listening to music when you're really not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just because you don't want to talk to the Phyllis of the office. Yeah. I will say this. I love, love the Phyllis interaction with, um, oh my gosh, what's her face? Um, when they go to do the sales call? Yeah. It was, yes. she's, she's like, you don't know who Bob Vance of Answer's Refrigeration <laughs> is? You've got a lot to learn about this town. Huh? I appreciate her love <laughs> yeah. for her husband. Yeah. Like I am, yeah. she's invested in that man. So well, I, I'm there with her yeah, on that one. I, and I don't, I'm, I haven't watched that as many times as you, as y'all have, but, um, what's the one where it is where they're going out on sales like visits and Mm -hmm. who does she take with her and makes her she takes the girl from parks and rec i cannot yeah Yeah, yeah, it's blame it's blanking (laughs) on me too she dated jim came from the i can't think of it (laughs) uh, because all i can think about is karen from parks and rec but that's not it, or no, is her name karen in the show it's karen in the show yeah Yeah, Yeah, because then she has that voicemail it's karen yeah Yeah. and jim's like yeah no it, it sounds good yeah yeah. I need more Italian in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Karen Philippe. Yeah, and they go get, yeah, exactly. And then they go get the makeovers. <laughs> then when they show up, they find out why. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was yeah. a very smart business move on Phyllis's yeah. end. She's yeah. a good salesperson, yeah. for sure. That, that, was a, that was a good moment. Or when she uh, when she wants to wear the Santa suit and Michael gets so pissed <laughs> off about it. There are great Phyllis moments. Uh, mm-hmm. She is, I can get why though. It's not someone who I would enjoy working yeah, with. Yeah, as but. a, well, that's the thing about some of these characters. That's what makes that's it what great they're in the show. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to be the the typical version of whoever they're playing. Oh, yes. And they're supposed to be people you don't, you don't, that bother you. If you were in the office, they oh, bother yeah. you for different reasons. I definitely like give off Stanley vibes. Like I channel my inner Stanley yeah. probably a lot. Like 
I have no time for your mess. Doing Just your let crosswords. me do what I need yeah. to do. Yeah. I don't necessarily would do the crosswords, but as far as like always looking forward to that time off, always looking yeah. forward to yeah. pretzel to, day, mm-hmm, little things in life. It's funny I, though, because we say that I can't say that I would relate to any one character. You know what I mean? Like maybe because they're all too, ex- too extreme. I of think their you're versions. kind of a Stanley. Really? You sit with your headphones in, like by yourself, let me just get the job done yeah. type of thing. And that's how Stan- Stanley, the, Stanley for does sure. not want to do any of your antics. Mm-hmm. For sure. In the meetings, I, I'm ready to get out of there. Um, I will, they're called huddles at my job. Of course. Um, yeah, of course <laughs> they are. Uh, and I, I hope she's listening to this. My previous supervisor, uh, extremely long winded. I mean, extremely to the point of redundancy. And it's like, can we please just get on with this? Like, we, this could have like, been yeah. an email. This was supposed to be 15 I'm minutes. I'm very this keen. Now this could have been an email. This has now yeah. been an hour. Like, we don't have time for this um, yeah. kind of stuff. So, I I don't know who I would be. I mean, probably Stanley, probably Oscar. I'm very judgy in the workplace. Yeah, I was going to say maybe Oscar for myself um, as well I, at moments. I don't handle incompetence well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that about myself. <laughs> Yeah. And um, especially in the workplace, like it's one because th- I'm very much like, just let me do my job. Leave me alone. Let me go home type mm-hmm. of like, person. Yeah. And um, I wish I was paid based on production, not based on my time spent. And uh, I feel like I feel like Oscar could relate to that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He well, hates Oscar's wasted. in accounting, right? He, That's he the hates point. wasted time. And, yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm, I I'm feel like of, he's the only one in accounting actually doing accounting oh, work. Oh, like, 100%. I mean, they <laughs> I don't do. Even, Angela's just there to complain the entire time. They do do a good point of making Angela like. You said doo-doo. Doo-doo, doo-doo. <laughs> uh, so they, that's what we've, deg- we're, we're down to that yeah, level. Well, we're talking about the office. <laughs> it's true. Michael would have made that joke. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Angela, they do a good job with Angela to, to make points that she does do work there. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of times where she's like, you know, yeah. throwing things on Michael's desk, complaining about what he does or when she forgot to send the checks or whatever. And Dwight has to go. But Oscar is the only one that does seem like he's consistently just sitting there doing his doing job. Doing his job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you watch the British version before you watched it? Or have you seen the British I've version? I've seen it. Um, I, I struggle with accents. So... This was before I started using um, captions. I was very against captions oh, when watching TV, but now that's like I can't watch Reagan TV without them. I'm anti caption. Oh, man. I, uh, just for a second, for the world to hear me, I hope if you relate to me out there, please e- don't email us, tag us on Facebook or something, comment something. I do nothing but read. I'm not looking at what's happening on the screen. So, like, if I can hear what they're saying, or I would rather miss a word or two than miss an entire action scene or di- you know, uh, emotional interaction mm-hmm. because I'm just reading what, th- if I want to read, I'll read a book. Okay. So your, your problem matters much less to the people who can't hear what's happening. That part. No, it's great. <laughs> if, but I can't, here's the, I can hear what's happening. Yeah. So I'm, I'm saying you're probably more so in the minority than you think you are on that. Maybe. Or maybe I'm, I mean, I am just selfish, but <laughs> I was against it for the longest time. And then I don't know what caused me to crack if it was the, I've noticed movies are louder with audio, like sound effects versus Mm -hmm. actual dialogue. dialogue. So I have to have them on for dialogue now because everybody whispers and it gets on my nerves. Um, I would also, but I understand where you come from with that rating because I was like that for the longest time. I would say to your point, you're talking about wanting to miss a word rather than an action sequence. I have found being able to know exactly what is saying only enhances my viewing pleasure. Like Agreed. Like knowing yeah. every specific detail of what's going on and what's said, like you don't lose anything. That's true. And I am a little ADD, so I'm probably getting lost in my You're thought like, of what, what did you just, what mm-hmm. did you just say? You got to uh, be able to take it all in at once. Yeah. That, that takes practice. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Um, Agreed. It's like um, drinking out, drink, like drinking coffee. You just got to <laughs> keep doing until you like <laughs> keep it. Keep going. Good save. Good save. Never enough. Our, the other never thing, enough. the other thing too. Listeners. Um, I will say that if you get. The one time I appreciated subtitles was watching Hamilton. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, because you you're, absolutely You're have, so white, Reagan. No, <laughs> the first time around, if you go back and listen to the songs, I know everything they're saying now, even just listening to the songs. Over I had over. to have subtitles. But the first time Hamilton around, too. Like, yeah, we got two too. minutes in, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. What is happening? What <laughs> is being said right now? pump the brakes, turn on the subtitles, mm-hmm. because I'm not going to get through this without... I'm not going to understand most Did of what's Did you see happening. the thing about WandaVision when the it was the Modern Family Office, like episode where she was like 
you could uh if you had subtitles on you could hear her thoughts yeah oh. you have to go back and watch it now yeah we yeah. had to rewatch the episode because the subtitles For were the whispering sure and it we didn't have any idea oh, what she was saying wow. i saw that on tiktok yeah it's also okay I we're on a, with yeah. so much on a tangent here <laughs> but i will agree that also in moments of games or uh, shows movies whatever where there's stuff happening in the background on mm-hmm. the tv you pick up a lot more of the oh, yeah. background conversations that mm-hmm. you're supposed to hear but they're too they're not prominent so you really you probably you miss, miss it. Mm-hmm. most of it um so it's so british office you watch right the yeah so <laughs> Anyway, um, I knew where we started. I started. Good, good, good I job. did. I started watching that um, because I, I mean, I found out about it after I watched the the American version, um, and then I realized it was like verbatim the first episodes, mm-hmm. um, first season all the way through. But I just, I've always struggled with British television for that reason. Like the the Cockney accents are just so thick sometimes that I can't understand what they're saying. So um, I mean, I've watched it. I finished it. It's definitely a drier version, which yes. I don't know how you can get any drier than the American version, but it is a lot drier. But I do adore Ricky Gervais as an actor mm-hmm. and a person in general. I love his brashness. So I powered through because I adore Gervais. And then I also saw interactions between Carell and Gervais that just piqued my interest even more. So mm-hmm. I've seen them both. I definitely have only watched the British version once mm-hmm. all the way through. Um, I probably won't rewatch that one. Just because I know what's going to happen. I appreciate for sure. your honesty. Yeah. Ne- never seen it, but I definitely appreciated, or I thought it was brilliant when Gervais came to interview for Michael's job. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. yes. That was One so, of my favorite episodes is bringing so in all those well-known actors. Um, and I love that they landed on Will Ferrell for that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of the British version. I like British television just pretty much in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so the dry British humor is right up my alley. Um, and a lot of uh, that cast of that show is really, really good. Um, you, A lot of people maybe didn't realize it at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, like you talk about Ricky Drace, Martin Freeman plays the mm-hmm. gym role. Martin yep. Freeman's a huge actor. Mm. Um, oh, a lot of big names. I'm drawing a blank on who plays the Pam character. What's her name? But she's in Wonder Woman. Uh, oh. She came to Pensacon two years ago. Um, the mm. guy who plays the Dwight role is in Pirates of the Caribbean. He's in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Like there's right. a now lot, a lot of famous people in the British version. For those that didn't know it even existed, which I don't understand how you don't. Um, didn't mean to insult anybody. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> people wow. who hate subtitles and didn't know the yeah, British Yeah, this is my this is podca- coming for people today. This is my best episode, I think. Um, people who like Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, you've got to pick a side today. I've offended five of our ten <laughs> listeners. Um, anyway, I, man, I lost what I was going to say on that. Um, the U.S. version is a remake. If you didn't know, was that no? What oh, about? how many seasons? How many seasons are there? I, I want to say it's just one. And a Christmas special. It mm-hmm. might be two oh, really? and a Christmas special. But oh, it's so easy to get there. It's probably yeah. like 12 episodes total. Like British TV. It just it didn't pick is, up. Is the, well, no. It, British TV is the opposite of American TV. British TV does not do the season, season, season thing. They don't kill it until it's do dead. They they don't? Keep killing it. I mean, Doctor Who. Come on. Uh, well, you got to let it die. <laughs> I'm Those very are against Doctor Who, but that's a whole different fighting words. <laughs> whoa, whoa. You, you can get Uninvited. out of my house. We're all here to we're, fight some battle cance- today. We're canceling this episode. <laughs> this is a uncut version. Take away my top badge and everything. Removed. Oh yeah. You have never yeah. watched Lord of the Rings. And I know. They're like, how can you Doctor be we don't Who. want you to be our fan anymore? <laughs> oh my gosh. So Hold on, just to address what she just said, I forgot to say this in the intro. She is regularly yep. one of our two top fans on Facebook, so she interacts with us the most, which is really cool. So welcome. Hey, we I'm all about supporting supporting people's dreams. Anyway, back That's to the least I can do. To, uh, what were we talking about? I'm so mad about right Doctor the office. We've oh. Doctor so many Who tangents. should end. That's what she <laughs> says. Right. She hates uh, Doctor Who. Um, well, I'm I'm gonna ignore that. We'll talk about it. It's after okay. The podcast. Yeah, it's okay. Also, a whole separate podcast. Uh, gosh, right? I Doctor Who and Critical Role. Those would be my topics. If if yes. I were a guest on this podcast, it would be one of those yes. two things. They're good seasons, but the show in general. Mm. Um, so you you're not a big fan of the British version. You love the American version. Mm-hmm. There's talk of maybe a reboot or a sequel of some sort. How do you no. feel about that? <laughs> Leave yeah, it alone. No. Um. 
I, I'm not a fan of reboots for anything. Um, I'm just very, let the original be the original. Mm-hmm. Um, I just worry about fans have these ideas already of what, what it should be. And it's not fans writing it. It's definitely the same producers or directors. And I feel like that creative energy just gets lost after time has been spent and fan theories just go crazy. Like Mm -hmm. we're witnessing it right now with MCU, like the fan theories are out of control and they're having to wind that in. So I would just be concerned with the fans being disappointed because I would be probably up there with disappointment. Um, while I love the idea of more episodes and things of that nature, um, I just kind of want it to be original. Like when they sent out the last blooper reel, like they'd never seen mm-hmm, before mm-hmm. cold open with the matrix and Dwight, it, it was very nostalgic for me. And I remember just like the, the pure happiness on my face when I was watching it and I watched it like five times. My husband's like, why are you watching the same thing over and over? And I was like, because we haven't seen office mm-hmm. material mm-hmm. in like seven years. So while I would love it, I would hate it because I had these high expectations. So I hope they don't do anything like yeah, that yeah, for sure. That is the double edged sword mm-hmm. on, you know, kind of fan ownership of anything mm-hmm. is that we, one, we think our ideas are best. And then two, we set the bar way too high to be able to enjoy the product. Mm-hmm. Um, surprisingly enough, I I would say the one exception to this recently has been Zack Snyder's Justice League, that there was a lot of excitement. A lot of people were very curious into watching this. And for the most part, most people seem pretty pleased. Oh, coming yeah. Out no, it. it was. They never should have put yeah. out the first one. But that's that's different though because that's a version of something that was released that's true that, that's true that had edits and cuts differently and maybe are definitely a more pure version of what was created already all 100 percent, as opposed to rebooting or redoing yeah, or yeah. coming back to do more mm-hmm. uh it was just Cause taking... i think like for the justice league those are two different same storyline but two different versions yep Whereas if you're rebooting something, you have to like scrape together material. You have to go back and look at, all right, where are the storylines? Because like, where would we pick up? We would pick up Angela and Dwight's life, Ryan and Mindy's life. Um, What is Jim doing now that he's in Philly type thing? Where is Craig Robinson and his part of it? So I think it's just, I don't know. I feel like there'd be a lot of backstory. And if you don't cover that backstory is another thing that's going to like upset fans. Yeah. Like I know it would well, upset me if we just skipped over all that, you know, for, to me, it's hard to, a reboot is one thing if it's 30 years in the future. Mm. Okay. Where you, where you have, where you're just kind of starting over with the same characters and bringing so them a in. So a quasi sequel ish. Right. Mm-hmm. Or if you feel like there was a better way to tell a story and, or you want to, cast it with you know in our in our american history uh, most everything is so whitewashed mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you want to go back and make it more authentic or you mm-hmm. want to go back ethnic and of, or, or you yeah. want to go in and include you know other people and recast those roles that's fine yeah but when you want to just you closed something so nicely mm-hmm. in, a, in a nice little bow and you want to open that box again don't mess with a good thing. We exactly. have this great product. Let mm-hmm. it live on as it is. Because the office um, ended so beautifully. Like mm-hmm. I remember, I still to this day it when had, I watched the the last episode, yeah. I am a weeping mess. Yeah, like it had its, back. Yeah, it had its rough parts. But oh yeah, it closed. It closed. It closed. It, like everything. Like all the ends were tied. There were no loose ends. Right. So leave at it at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Leave it alone. Um, I feel like all questions were answered at the end of that. At the end of the series, for sure. I am a fan of reboots personally uh i like i mean, let me point to this one. i don't think they're necessarily good i like the challenge of it and mm-hmm. here's here's one thing i would say it doesn't get rid of what you love it do, and it doesn't have to taint it um you know i don't i don't love the new beauty and the beast movie i'm on record as saying i think it's pretty terrible <laughs> that doesn't ruin the original animated film that no, i not, so at all. not at all um however I mean, I agree with you guys what you're saying. The the ending is is perfect, and it doesn't need more. If they wanted to do something that was like, you know, an hour special, catch right. up where these characters right. are, I would watch it. That's fine. Oh, yeah. And I probably would enjoy it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Things like that, yeah, like I don't an hour it. special. I don't, yeah, exactly. But I don't need, like, a whole new season. So I don't yeah. need six yeah, more seasons. Like I, yeah, that's a stretch. I will mm-hmm. offer you a counter. 
the show Dexter absolutely needs another season. But because like, that didn't it didn't end well. Correct. It didn't it didn't tie up any loose ends. Yep. It just created more questions. But I absolutely love diff- Dexter. Oh my goodness. It, do you think show. I, what I'm saying is these rules can't be standard. They can't be applied the same equally right. to it all. It depends things. on what you get. And in the office we got what we needed. Yeah. Do you think that time makes a difference in reboots? Mm. like separated from the original or the second iteration? I definitely think there needs to be time to process it. You know, like, for example, if you're asking me a property that I think is it would be time for a reboot for, and this, again, controversial, I think you could make a new Harry Potter. Um, mm-hmm. It's been like... You could pick that up. Almost sure. 20 years since the first she Harry Potter film came up. Hey, she she keeps trying and keeps saying really offensive things. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so let's get away from that. Uh, I'm, just, uh, I'm just saying <laughs> that, you know, it, time does play a factor. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't remember when Dexter ended, but it has absolutely been too long. Yeah. Uh, when Dexter ended the way it did, they should have made him like, just kidding. We're going to do it again. Coming yeah. back. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example of not enough time in between. Spider-Man. In... Oh, movies. I, I disagree. Whatever. We I, got the origin whatever. story <laughs> Spider-Man. too many times, right? Uh, too many times close twice. together. Yeah, like Spider-Man, Batman are the same. Those uh, those yeah. movies need to, they need to I stop. I wouldn't say, like, yeah, we guess we got it twice. No, whatever, Batman, but, like we're on, like I'm on my what, like sixth Batman of my lifetime? Like, yeah, mm, but I'm saying, the, so yeah. there's two things there. Sony mishandled the reboot mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. we got the origin story again. Yep. And we mm-hmm. all know, well, first of all, we were so familiar with the origin story before we got the first movie. We didn't need to see it twice. MCU handled it well because they just skipped over all They of skipped that. over that. Started mm-hmm. with a new character, started with a new universe per se, but but kind of in a nice quick little fast forward mm-hmm. gave us gave us the, the story. They did the same thing with Hulk. In like a what, two minute thirty second intro, we got the uh we got the the origin story of the Hulk mm-hmm. and he never even really had his own movie. So um, yeah, the Incredible Hulk film with starring Edward Norton. Mm-hmm. They just recasted him. They just recasted for him. Avengers, right? Po- politics. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, anyway, I, you know, if you can tell, this is where I fall on the subject, and I, it would be where I t- fall on the office too. Which, again, may be controversial. If you can tell a good story, um, I don't care how many iterations there are. Like if you if someone said, "Hey, I want to do a different version of the office and it's completely different." Oh, yeah. It's not I've, just like a yeah. reboot of Jim mm-hmm. and yeah. Pam. It's all new characters, but it's about, you know, what it's like to work every day in an office and the awkward mm-hmm. things you're going to do. And it's 2021. And it's 2021. It's a different world. You know, you'd have to deal with COVID or whatever. Like, yeah. I think yeah. that would be an interesting show. I would watch that. And as long as as long as it's a well-made product, yeah. I'm on board. No, I'll, I, allow, I'll allow it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I like how you put that, Katie. I oh, do wow. agree um and I forgot what I was going to say. I would think if you were to, like, on what you just said, I think if you were to bring back the original cast to 2021, the show oh. wouldn't last. Um, I don't there think that would so, be as good. Well, I think it's just, uh, there's just so many things that you could get away with in the early 2000s versus now. Mm. Um, yeah. People understand satire humor far mm-hmm. better in mm-hmm. our generation than they do now mm-hmm. so i feel like the newer generations would be very quick to go no we can't say that absolutely can't say that yeah um because the office definitely danced that oh, fine it should, it line would have, it would have gotten canceled absolutely yeah it would be completely canceled these days but i think it's we knew back then that these are people we deal with in and out of real life mm-hmm. but at the same time we were the ones standing up like going up to the plate and handling those situations head on. Like, Hey, this isn't okay. Like mm. let's think of a more constructive way to talk about this. And I think, but we still like allowed people to, um, to grow in their development. Like, okay, what I said was wrong. So I'm going to fix it this way. Similar to like how Michael Scott did that with everything he ever offended mm, yeah. anybody with. He mm. was like, Oh wait, you know, I didn't mean it like that. You're right. Let's circle back with that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't think it'd be a bad thing. I think it would have to be, like you said, a whole new cast, a whole different dialogue, um, because I don't feel like the original cast could carry that well, Yeah, if that makes sense. I definitely think that part of, um, I don't know, cancel culture or whatever you want to say, whatever word you want to put on it, is actually born out of kind of the lessons of The Office. Because when mm-hmm. the thing about The Office that's really interesting is it's not... I guess it depends on your opinion, but it's not glorifying these things. Like Michael constantly learns lessons. Like he messes up. And that's the other great thing about Michael Scott is that Michael never does anything out of malice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He just does it because out of ignorance. And when people point it out to him, 
he it breaks his heart that yeah. he ever yeah. Hurt, yeah. that he ever yeah. hurt or offend anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think a lot of the kind of the attributes or a lot of those attributes are kind of what's inspire things, quote unquote, like cancel culture, because you 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 don't want to hurt or offend or upset anyone if you know better. You know, should you be that way? Yeah. Um, so it's it's weird because I think it kind of taught the lesson that I do think it probably would suffer from today. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Um, that so, grace period yeah, of yeah. allowing somebody to grow in that role. Like I think about the the episode with Oscar when he like is forcing Oscar to kiss him <laughs> and they go through with it and then he leaves. And then as the Oscar's boyfriend is picking him up. He's like, I wonder if he knows that's his roommate. I wonder, I wonder if he knows, like he still has that ignorance there, but you know that he's taken a lesson from Mm -hmm. it. So I definitely agree that that's a lot of what the office is. Yeah. Um, which makes it even better. All the humor involved for sure. Yeah. So after, after all these years, um, what keeps you coming back? What's your favorite thing? What keeps you coming back? I think it's just, the humor and the relatableness of it. It's just so simple. It, it, there's no, um, while they touch on like hot topics of what that time was, like there's planking era, there's the parkour. Mm -hmm. They really tied in the, the social, what is hot right now, Mm -hmm. um, into the show. So to me right now, that brings back a bunch of nostalgia of quote unquote, simpler times. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's just timeless. Like the content doesn't age. It stays right. very relatable all the time. The relationships, the, um, we talked about like the cast and can we relate to, they're all extreme, but we see that each day. So I think it's just, it reminds you of what you actually deal with outside of your own like four walls. Um, so that's why I just keep going back. It's just the storyline is awesome. And they, they do very well in following the storyline episode after episode, mm-hmm. but still touching almost everybody in each episode. Yeah, I think that it um, it is a show that builds on itself, mm-hmm. um, not just in story, but in humor. And to my point earlier, you if you just come in the middle, you know, season three, and you watch an episode, it it's not going to make any sense. It's, mm-hmm. Why is that funny? That's the dumbest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Um, because they're playing on, some of the jokes are playing on information from episodes back with the character interactions. Mm -hmm. Uh, but also you have to, uh, and one of my favorite things about it, I guess you have to understand the people or the characters to understand the jokes that are being made, their their personalities. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big proponent on, you know, you can get into a workplace. It doesn't have to be an office, but anywhere. And it's people, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's different. What motivates them, what drives them, what inspires them? Um, what makes them happy, sad? Uh, Why do they, talk one way or um focus on certain things right so you have to but to understand that person is to understand okay maybe they didn't mean to be a jerk when they said that because i know that they always have that tone Mm -hmm. or they have an accent or you know they english is not their first language they Mm -hmm. don't know how to use the language properly they didn't Mm -hmm. mean what they said but if you don't go to the depths of understanding those people you're going to write them off as a jerk or stupid or Mm -hmm. whatever. And that's the same thing with the office characters. They're Mm -hmm. stereotypes, but the more... I feel like it touches everything. Like when you look at, like I think of shows like Friends and How I Met Your Mother, the diversity piece, it really isn't there. But when you look at the office, like everything is diversity. And the more you get to know those characters, Mm -hmm. the more you understand the intricacies of the humor that that you're that you're seeing um and so you you can't just watch season one you can't just mm-hmm. watch season six you have to go from start to finish every time because it gets funnier it gets uh, mm-hmm. more personal more relatable to mm-hmm. these characters um which i think to your point makes it timeless mm-hmm. absolutely this is my one of my final questions i would ask do you have a like recommended episode to tell people do you have a favorite episode or do you have an episode that you're like watch this and tell me what you think it's a little late now because pretty much everyone's watched it but it would depend on who i'm trying it depends on my audience like if i'm if i'm talking to like a girlfriend who is in love with love stories uh definitely the episode where jim and pam get married like number one is one of my favorites like 
the dialogue where he talks about, um, you know, st- or plan A was this, plan B was yeah. this, and plan C was that. That that part just gives me goosebumps every single time. Like they're in the Niagara Falls, and he just looks at the camera while he's holding her, smiling. Like I break down every time. Um, so I would recommend that one for that instance. If there's someone looking for just gut busting humor, the CPR, like where um, Dwight sets everything on fire yeah. and then they had the CPR class, like one of the best episodes out there. Um, that's so tough. I really, I don't know. Like they're all just so like they all piece together well. Mm. So it's hard to just pick one. Yeah, I really, because there's also just so many good points. Like whenever Jim was not in Scranton, I cannot remember the city name that he was in. Um, when he wasn't in Scranton, when they're all playing um, Call of Duty, like mm-hmm. that one's really funny too. <laughs> that is a good one. Um, I think Jim had some of his best pranks when he was out of the office as well. Yeah. And then, um, but when he's back, just thinking you can't beat the Michael Scar where he's showing Holly the the video, the yeah. midnight yeah, yeah. Um, threat level threat midnight. midnight. Yeah, they're all just. I feel like there's just really good episodes in each season. Mm-hmm. It's so tough. I, I can't. I really can't pinpoint one. Reagan, do you have one? I, 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 no, I haven't watched it enough to be like, oh, this is my favorite episode. I would say probably get through season one, get through season two. Season three is where it really. Season takes three off. is all hits. I would say, mm-hmm. yeah. So oh, yeah, anything, everything up I would grab three. anything in season mm-hmm. three to say this is, uh, this is what it's all about. But mm-hmm. again, you've got. To understand and appreciate and laugh at season you have three, to get through you season have one to get and through two. one and two. I feel like any, I, I've actually had a couple of Breeses who haven't ever seen it. So, um, cause my, all of my stuff at work is like decked out in the office. Actually for my birthday, they just got me a shroot book and they all signed it on the back and it That's just funny. hangs in my office. That's awesome. I was like, this is worth one hundredth of a penny and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here for it. Um, but I've had a couple of Breeses. I'm like, get through season one, get through season two. I need you to just hang in there and then you're going to fall in love. Mm-hmm. So I definitely, season three is where it definitely kicks off. Yeah. I think probably my favorite episode is Casino Night, um, which is the season finale mm-hmm. of season two. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just, I mean, it's a great episode. It's funny. You know, you get the weird Michael have being on a double date. You know, he's got two separate oh, yeah. dates yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you have obviously Jim and Pam, you know, Jim finally confessing his love and then they kiss. Yeah. And um, there's a lot, there's a the Casino Night is a great episode top to bottom. Mm-hmm. The one I would recommend people to watch is Benny Hanna Christmas. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it is one of the funniest episodes. And again, it's just a really good example of what, that show is there's kind mm-hmm. of you know there's the cringe humor and michael yeah. can't yeah. tell the asian girls apart and oh yes. yeah, yeah 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 um and there are there's good character moments for everyone yeah. um there's the 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 two party there's the party planning committee and then the committee that plans parties mm-hmm. right, um, right, right um i mean it's it's a it's a great episode it, it is. is yeah uh i would say the dun any dundies yeah like oh gosh the good. dundies are so good the yeah. original dundie is probably my favorite yeah. out of the original and then the one that uh will hosted for sure yeah yeah uh, I, there's something about I found God in this chilies tonight or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So if you had to make a critique for the office or office fandom or, you know, sitcoms in general, what would it be? Uh, I think it goes back to the, like, leave it alone. Let it, let it be. Uh, I'm not, we've already talked about not a fan of rebooting it, but if there are extra footages of bloopers, um, you want cold opens, I want snippets. I just want little tastes here and there. Um, I, I feel like the cast already does really well with that. Am I, am I touching? No, you're good. You're good. Um, I feel like the cast already does really well with that. Uh, like with, um, John Krasinski and his some good news. He constantly brings mm-hmm. people on the show. Angela and Pam, her name is not Pam in real life. And I can Jenna Fisher. Thank yeah. you. Um, I know Angela's real name is Angela yeah. though. Um, so Angela and Jenna have the office girls and then Kevin just started his own podcast. Yeah. So I appreciate that they're keeping it alive. And that's personally the best way I feel it can be done. Um, just so that we can revisit what happened and then we mm-hmm. get their standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, 
as far as like fandom goes, as new generations get introduced to it, I do worry about cancel culture because it touches on a lot of topics that are on like social injustice and things of that sort that we're facing as a country. And we're just kind of like, this is not tolerated. So that's where I just worry that they don't understand that this Mm. is satire. Yeah. You have to look at who wrote this. You have to really look at the minds behind Ricky Gervais and BJ Novick and all these other people that they're touching on this for satire reasons Mm -hmm. to like point out our shortcomings and show you how to have humor in a nice light way. Um, so I feel like that's my biggest concern and my biggest critique to the fandom is just, just enjoy it for what it is. Don't, don't look so deep into it. It doesn't, they don't go that deep. You don't need to go that deep. It's definitely not a, a deep show. I'm going to make a Reagan complaint. By oh, that. Man. I'm going to make wow. a, I'm going to make a, I'm going <laughs> to wow, make, okay. I'm going to make a selfish complaint. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's a callback to something you said Ooh, earlier in this podcast, man. That's how you do improv people. Um, <laughs> the, Peacock, I'm not paying no, for seasons no. four through nine. <laughs> Stop trying to make me do it. It's not going to happen. Netflix, I, I pay for Peacock I, uh, for The you're Office. Doing you're doing one of the, I'm, I am a free Peacock only kind of guy. Yeah, oh, I'll man. go buy DVDs 100 refuse uh, paying yep. for Peacock. My children uh, destroy everything, so I can't do DVDs. The mm. o- I, I will say this in Peacock's credit. They have a Tonight Show channel, which just plays like, snippets of the tonight show mm-hmm. i will put that on for like hours yeah but you can get that on youtube or i Facebook. absolutely can like, peacock is free <laughs> there's a paid version okay, okay. yeah which allows you to access office i think i think you can watch through season three for free i think so but so four through nine you have well, to yeah they know it. that's the hook yeah they suck yeah they know what they're doing they're like we'll get they know that their third show. season in they lost a billion People. dollars last year so they don't know what they're doing oh man. well okay because yeah, they still don't have the rights to Friends, which was an NBC mm-hmm. show. Which is on HBO. Which is on HBO, which we yeah. also pay for that, too. Oh, HBO is the best. So. <laughs> it is so good. <laughs> uh, not sponsored by Peacock. Absolutely would accept the sponsorship by HBO. <laughs> we we'll accept a sponsorship I mean, by anybody, really. <laughs> I was like, wasn't Dexter out there. an HBO show or was that Showtime? I don't remember. Pretty much anybody. Anybody. Uh, so what do you think, you know, you're anti-reboot, but what do you think the future holds? Do you think one is coming? I really don't know. I feel like it's still... It's fresh on those actors' minds for sure because they have their podcasts and they're doing commercials mm-hmm, and they're mm-hmm. doing all these different things. Yeah. So they're I back don't. In the space for sure. Yeah. I just. I don't know what's in the future. Um, I'm not against things in the future. I just know my hopes are very high. Um, because mm. I like the, I like that the pop culture is like playing into like Wandavision did their mm-hmm, little. Mm-hmm thing of like when vision just looked at the camera yeah. i was like oh, i'm getting all those gym vibes yeah. right now um and then there's talk like i was i won't lie i was disappointed in that episode because the fandom had mm-hmm. created this theory mm-hmm. that john krasinski was gonna show up um, missed opportunity very missed opportunity i'm, I'm sure they still all think start, it's coming hashtag uh, mr fantastic i really hope i i just adore john krasinski um but anywho so i well, john I krasinski was in the show Oh, he was. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. he was. You're Making correct. a Jimmy Woo joke. <laughs> he a- absolutely was. Good for you for not seeing for not seeing color yeah. there, Reagan. <laughs> um, Asian Jim. Asian Ooh, Jim. Deep cut. Deep cut. Yes. Um, so yeah, I I don't know, but I'm not against any of it. I'm I'm here for it. I'm I'm gonna tread lightly if something new develops, but I'm still gonna go for it because it's tied to the office for sure. Yeah, I mean, I would say that going back to our earlier conversation, what they are doing, what the cast is doing with their podcasts and their specials and their, Mm -hmm. that to me is the right way to still offer us new content to consume Mm -hmm. on something that's so beloved without going back and trying to give us more that we don't need, if that makes sense. Like we can, we're getting, we're actually getting more, we're getting the extra soft opens that were never released. We're getting the inside scoop, if mm-hmm. you will. Um, we're getting their perspective. We're getting to relive these moments with the people that put it on. Uh, and sometimes that offers up new content. Uh, so a few episodes of The Office Ladies that I've listened to, they talk about uh, alt- alternate openings or they talk about alternate scenes that were written out mm-hmm. or cut out or, oh, so-and-so wrote that one or I got this script or I got the, you know, they're giving us those things without giving us those things exactly and in a fresh way which i think is great 
Because I personal. think about all these other iconic TV shows, like, and you're not getting that. Like yeah. Friends, why, everybody why wants a Friends reboot, oh, but nobody talks about it, other than Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. But like, where is everybody else? But even Jen doesn't want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah. But give me podcasts on it. Yeah. I mean, to me, that like I'm the kite type of person. I'll watch. Uh, I've watched the commentary on Star Wars like multiple times. No uh, way, be- not you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've watched all the bonus features on every single release uh, mm-hmm. multiple times. That's I've I purchased multiple versions for the specials not for to have another version of the movie mm-hmm. um so i'm i'm all about that kind of stuff give me give me a boy meets world podcast where they talk about you know moments in the show like i think we live in a world now where that's so easy for them to do that i don't need i didn't need i didn't need girl meets world what i needed was a podcast about boy meets world mm-hmm. um, and i think the office people have captured that have so absolutely captured well. that and i don't but care still that, allow people to grow in their role like john yeah. krasinski being a director and writing Things like Quiet Place is yeah, just yeah. I'm invested because that's John Krasinski, right. and then I'm invested in anything Steve Carell does. Yeah. Um, well, and I, I'm glad that okay, The Office Ladies is a thing. Well, sure, Stanley can do his. Oh yeah, because um, Kevin, that's Kevin what Kevin's do doing his, on his. Like, mm-hmm. go for it because it's different perspectives. We don't. That's that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. That's to me. That's what the future holds. Yeah, I think you'll see. I think it's more likely we'll see a, a continuation or. Um, I don't even know, following of the cast and crew of that show rather than a new version of that show. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I do think, I, I think a reboot will happen. I, I think NBC is too tempted. Peacock loses too much money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Having said that, you know, you talk about cold opens, stuff like that. A lot of that is on, I, I you know, I dissed Peacock a second ago, but they do have extended editions of the episodes. They do. Um, mm-hmm. They do have cold opens that weren't yeah. seen before. That's how the Matrix one came out. Uh, Peacock yep. released it as kind of like a promo. You know, hey, this is kind of stuff you're going to get if you oh buy it Oh, my goodness, yes. Yeah. I mean, this, honestly, I won't lie. That was the reason I was like, I'm in. I'll yeah. buy it. Yeah. Well, Versus buying DVDs like or digital copies of yeah. it, for sure. And uh, Steve Carell, I mean, he's tried to do the Michael Scott character like, what three times now since the office? Well, so I mean, he just needs to go back to Michael Scott. Like, <laughs> that's and that that brings me. To, I think he's not done with that character. I don't think to why I I'm I don't know where it stands because Greg Daniels currently has two shows in production. One of them is with Steve Carell, Space Force, and it is a Michael Scott character. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I I don't think that show is very good. Yeah, but it's, it's a little dry. I I'm, liked it. I'm but... I'm invested because of who's writing it, yeah. who's in I it. I liked it. Chelsea doesn't I'm like, like maybe it, so it's just going to need it, its but... time to take off. Um, because I'm like, also Netflix doesn't. They do a pretty good job turning out pretty good shows. Like, yeah, yeah. But that leads me to believe that there's interest between those two guys to keep writing a character like mm-hmm. that, right? Um, which I think inevitably will lead them back down the road. Yeah. To making The Office again. Because, for example, I know Greg Daniels also famously made King of the Hill. Mm -hmm. And King of the Hill, it seems very likely, is going to come back. Right. So. Well, um, then we're in we're in the era of. Nostalgia. Nostalgia reboot. I mean, it's still very heavy. Um, So I I think. Our generation just refuses to let things die. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We love what we love. We love what we love. You know, whatever. Um, With him having those talks already for another show and with him making a very similar show with the same actors, mm-hmm. it kind of feels like a recipe to where we end up back. Right. Yeah. Um, and again, NBC loves money. So, Oh yeah, absolutely. Which to be fair in their defense, I would pay for Peacock for if they, you know, if there was like an exclusive I, I office. Have, yeah, reboot. I have to know. Yeah. Yes, I, I have to yes. know. I'm sure it's coming. Yeah. I'm sure. Um, I don't know though. They may not be able to, cause right now, I mean, Steve Carell's got the Apple, with um, yep, yep, the Good yep. Morning, the morning show, and which is a really good show too. Right, so. and I don't pay for Apple TV. I refuse. Oh. <laughs> I have access. I'm not going to say how. <laughs> I was like, I pay for it all. Like I, Somebody we don't have cable for, for a reason. But then we add all these extra yeah. streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's definitely they, it's they the caught same us. thing. Oh yeah, they caught us for sure. We, we oh gave no, in. I'm I refuse to. Get, I'm nope. It's not happening. <laughs> I will pick one and watch stuff on it until I'm like oh, I'm bored of this one and pick a new one. That's we I cancel that the old one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of the way it's structured. Well, the non-contract model. You say that, but the whole point is for them to make money. Yes, but I binge binge shows. Like, that is the kind of watcher that I am. So I will binge a show for a month Mm -hmm. or a week or two weeks, 
and then switch to the other That's service. That's our problem is we binge shows, but we binge shows on different platforms, and then we yeah. get yeah. so but caught I'll, up in them. Yeah, yeah. but I'll, I'll watch. you saying cancel that platform, you just stop. Oh, yeah. And then restart. Yeah, start no. the new one and go back. And we nope. did that. We just did a 30-day <laughs> free trial of Hulu. We're binging a show until the uh, end of the 30 until days, the and we're, end of we're the done with days. it. You can watch How I Met Your Mother on Hulu right now. Oh, we don't have time. We'll have to pick another email account, I guess, for that. Um, Make a whole new email. But, yeah, I, I refuse to do that. Yeah. I'm not I'm not paying a hundred, more than thirty dollars a month for my TV stuff. I refuse to do it. No subtitles, no more than three streaming right. services. That's Reagan. Well, really no more than two at this point. <laughs> All I'm Netflix hearing is, up is to fifteen dollars. Yeah. Go to Reagan's house if he invites you over for any kind of T V movie. No, Disney Plus. Do <laughs> come <laughs> do come over, log uh, into your account oh, and bless, we'll watch yep. it. And then and you'll then you save leave, it. And I'll I keep got it. it. No, I see what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, I'm picking yeah. up what you're putting down. Mm-hmm. Well, I believe that is the end of this podcast. Yeah, we got to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for joining us. Of course. Yes, thank you for thank having you, me. Katie, for coming. Uh, we appreciate uh, letting us go off on so many tangents today. But I it, know. Yeah, it, no worries. It, t- I, it tied I enjoy in. It. Yeah. it did. No, yeah. it's okay. It's a good well, it's, conversation. It's the sitcom of all sitcoms. So like you're going to talk about TV at large, right. I think, when right. you talk about The Office. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, um, do you have anything to plug, promote, if you'd like, Instagram or? I, um, I am not any sort of social media like influencer. Um, the only thing I influence is how to brew a cup of coffee and there you go. Well, dig into humanity. So um, my store, if you're in Pensacola, um, or if for, you're not and you're visiting, yeah, if you're visiting, um, I am located at the Starbucks in front of Coles. Um, 1701 East Nine Mile is my store. Been there for two years. We rock and roll. Um, we definitely do the best we can to get you in and out. That is something that I adore with my team. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, I know people want their coffee, but they want the convenience of this coffee. Let's get you in, get you out. Um, so if you're looking for that. It's easy to get trapped in that. Uh, it is, yeah. So. I have a, whew, it's a <laughs> parking lot. Once issue you're in, for sure you're in. <laughs> yeah and you have to go kind of go through the coles parking lot to get to me anyways yeah. um we're working on that i promise uh but anyways yeah if you want to come see me there that's where you can find me other than that i'm just a mom and a manager and a wife and just doing the a do momager. a, a momager, momager for sure put that on a shirt mm-hmm. probably already exists well it probably does. you heard it here first yeah, i doubt it <laughs> all right well thanks guys of course thank yeah. you thank you for listening to fantastic people please rate and subscribe wherever you find your podcast and follow us on social media. That's at Fantastic People Pod on Facebook, at Fantastic underscore People Pod on Instagram, and at Fantastic People, no E, on Twitter. We'd like to say thank you to Alex Edmondson for our artwork. We hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>